Evening, everybody. Glad to see you here. Glad to see you have strength after all the presentations, coffee breaks. So let's start with a small warm up. Who knows what uh, DSP is? Raise your hands. Wow, very good. Who operates a DSP? Raise your hands. And who buys from DSP? Okay, so we have first intro slides into what actually this piece is about. We'll go through them very quickly, just to remind everybody the basics, set the common ground for discussion, and then we'll talk about what makes the DSP good for you, how to pick up the right one, if you're using it, or what you consider when you're building and offering to customers, and we'll leave quite a lot of time for questions and answers since end of the day, maybe talking mood, asking questions mood. So, and if you have any questions, just for the format of this discussion or presentation, please save it for later. So, what is is not? DSP is not something uh, that brings you resolve through magical things. DSP is just part of the complex programmatic ecosystem and used to buy your media inventory. And this is the programmatic ecosystem, and I think you've seen this slide multiple times in all the different designs. So we'll talk, we'll talk about this small piece of, and where is the clicker? Here, DSP, and how it interacts with ad exchanges and SSPs. Something to consider again that when we talk about DSPs and programmatic, we're talking not about open RTB actions that sit in this part of the food chain, but we're talking about all types of cooperation that DSP can offer to you in buying media. That's open RTB, that usually everybody thinks when listen here in DSP, and then private marketplaces, preferred deals, and uh, programmatic guaranteed. So, what's the difference? Basically, the difference is really simple. Whether you buy it on the auction or whether you buy it like you used to buy just using programmatic technology. Then, again, uh, do you have a guarantee for the inventory or do you have a privileged access to this auction? And so it gives us four types of ways where you can use DSP. From open end exchanges and SSPs, to private marketplace, to preferred deals, and to programmatic guarantees. Again, just to see the difference, you have price or cost of the inventory you're buying, and you actually have data and transparency about the inventory you're buying. So it really depends on your needs and your business requirements, what type of setup would work for you. Just make sure if you want a lot of data and transparency, be prepared to pay a lot, be ready to work in this part of the diagram. Next, a very important thing is to understand what actually happens when you buy media. Uh, SSP sends, and this is a little bit technical, but please bear with me, because this is critical to understanding how to use DSPs right. SSP sends uh, the bid request to the DSP with a lot of data, and then the DSP needs to reply to these bid requests with the creative of choice. That's how it happens. So somebody sees the website on the website ad spot. Ad exchange or SSP takes this ad spot as a bid request and sends it to DSP. DSP then needs to pick up a relevant ad and reply with bid response. If the bid response wins, it then shows ads separately to the customer. Now, again, you've seen this diagram quite a few times as if you're working with programmatic, with open RTB, but what all these diagrams are missing is these endpoints. An endpoint is a very important part because understanding what endpoint is, how it works, and what benefits control endpoint gives either to DSP or to you as a customer, is critical to actually successfully buy media using DSP or any other programmatic, but well, DSP in our case. So we'll talk more about endpoint later on, but right now, who knows what endpoint is? Okay, so for everybody else who isn't exactly what, what endpoint is, endpoint is the URL where 
your ad exchanges and SSPs send bid requests to DSP. So usually we have one endpoint, again, depends on DSP technology used, one endpoint for one SSP, which allows to manage the flow of bid requests to DSP and actually allows to control what we want to buy, what we don't want to buy, how often we want to buy. So, second thing is that since all traffic comes to this endpoint, everybody, all the customers, all together, have just one chance to buy the impression they need to buy. And so, what DSP will choose actually decides whether you'll buy this impression, whether you'll show it, or whether you will not be able to show that to the customer. And since most of the DSPs are actually businesses to build to make money, they will show the ads that they will profit most from. At least I think so, they will do it. And again, understanding this will help you make up the right DSP selection because it's not only you using this DSP, it's hundreds or thousands of other customers using this DSP. And so that's why you might miss a lot of opportunities when buying ads because somebody else just bid more than you, so his creative will go to the auction, not yours. And then there will be multiple other DSPs fighting for the same opportunity to show an impression. Again, another, well, all programmatic clubs with three letter abbreviations, but QPS, who knows what QPS is? Okay, thank you very much. For everybody else, again, we'll talk about it later on, and sorry for getting technical again, but QPS is actually the capacity of DSP to receive bid requests to endpoint. So the higher the QPS is, the more uh, bid requests DSP can receive to an endpoint. Again, it's not important uh, to successful using, so it's not important whether DSP high, or sorry, QPS is high or low, it's just important to understand that between controlling endpoints and QPS, which usually nobody talks about, lies your power to successfully leverage DSPs. Was it too technical? Please raise your hands who understand nothing. I can repeat. So don't be shy because it is technical. Okay, so I hope uh, everybody at least has some basic understanding how the buying inventory happens between SSPs and DSPs and what is endpoint and QPS, so we can move on. How usually you evaluate your DSP? Well, three key criteria. Inventory, transparency, and support. When it comes down to inventory, you need to understand actually what business you're in, what media are you going to buy, whether it's what type of inventory, what volume you would have. Uh, whether the DSP has the suppliers that have the inventory that you need and uh, if they support the types of deals that you need. Like if you want to buy on through the private deals or through the programmatic guaranteed and your DSP would not support this, well, that's a question mark if you want to use this technology. If you're buying native and your DSP is focused on a video, that's another question mark. So before approaching the DSP selection choice, you have quite a lot of homework to do in to understand what inventory, at what volume, and how do you want to buy. And then, and only then, you can tell, okay, is this DSP the one I need? Would it offer me the inventory at scale and with deal structure I need? If yes, you can move on. Next one is transparency. And transparency comes down to the data you can extract based on your media buying activities. First, reporting. Actually, do you know where you bought the media that performed well for you? Each particular click, each individual buying impression? Because if you know, even if it's not exactly the publisher name, but at least an ID, then you can use all the targeting, all the white and black lists to narrow down only to the inventory you need. If you are offered to buy inventory blind, just say, hey, we'll give you results, then unlikely uh, you'll have a chance to optimize your media buying campaigns. Costs. That's another tricky question. Uh, you need to get really straightforward and perfect answers that you understand 
how the cost of using the technology will be calculated. If it's revenue share, fine. If it's fixed cost, fine. If it's volume cost, fine. But you need to understand how it will work. And then practices. By practices, I would understand actually how DSP or the company which operates, what it will do for you, what technologies it employs, whether like buying that inventory fits your business model and so on. So learn more about the technology you're going to buy or the company you're going to work with, like you do in many other business operations. Third one, support. Well, DSP is uh, quite technological stuff and sometimes technology is not performing. So you need to understand uh, the SLA of your provider. Well, how fast they gonna help you fix your issues. Like if you buy net scale, and quite a few of you, I guess, buy net scale, and uh, you stop buying for six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, you losing big money. So you need to understand how fast you can get your issues resolved. Second thing, your business always changing. So today you want a video, tomorrow you want native, or even better, you are buying native, but new native traffic sources are popping up, new SSPs are appearing. How prompt would be your DSP or your technology provider to integrate you with new traffic sources? Because you might buy what works now in three to six months and programmatic is changing rapidly. The environment changes. You want to buy traffic from that other traffic source, it's not available and you'll receive a reply, hey, we will add it next six months. It means a year for you and you might not be making the business you want to make. So consider this because being open to new traffic sources is actually means that you, if DSP supports you here, then you can buy the inventory you need to buy. Otherwise, you might be locked to the traffic sources they have at the moment, and they might not be working for you in three months from now. Last one is similar, but comes down to third-party solution providers. Like you want to implement optimizing technology, I don't know, tracking technology, uh, audit technology, anything else. If DSP can support these requirements, then you have your business process. If you need to have third-party audit, but uh, your DSP provider cannot support it, then again, it's a call for you whether you want to work with them or not. But you need to understand this before. Before we start to engage, before we start to invest in technology, buying it, implementing it, and so on and so forth. Same might come to some customization, which might be required for you. It's unlikely, it's expensive, but you still have to ask. So, given with these criteria above, inventory, transparency, and support. What makes a good DSP is very simple. One, that fits your needs and requirements. If you made your homework, if you know what inventory you need, if you know what support you actually need, if you are happy with the DSP transparency and support, then that's the DSP of your choice. If there is more than one, give it a test. And usually, if you buy different types of traffic, you might want to consider different DSPs to work with, like one for video, one for mobile, one for native, one for pop ads, and so on and so forth. Because there is usually not a solution, one solution that may fit all your requirements. So just pick up those technologies that meet your business needs. Now, operating a DSP, whether it's your own DSP, whether it's your rented DSP, whether you plan to build DSP, or whether you're just buying traffic. That's where we talk a lot about endpoints, EP1 on my diagram, the QPSs, that's the number of traffic received, and what, is, what needs to be done to get great result. So, two things. Laser focus on the traffic you need. So, what is an endpoint? Endpoint is a URL where you receive uh, those bid requests. And can you see these are the bid requests that Ad Exchange can send to you. The green ones are the ones you need. The black ones are the ones you don't need. So if you just integrate with an Ad Exchange and hey, guys, send me traffic, they will send you traffic and they will decide what traffic they want to send you. So they will make their choice. They will 
you have only one opportunity to buy uh, the impression you need to buy. So, if you're just asking any traffic source, like Exchange or SSP, he just give me some traffic, they will give you some traffic. But it will be their decision what traffic to send to you, and they don't actually know what traffic you need to buy. Moreover, something that, again, slips out of equation quite often is that both DSPs and SSPs or exchanges, it costs them money to send and process HBIT requests. So they just don't do it indefinitely. If you don't buy, they start to send you less and less traffic unless you start buying again. So it means that if you're receiving the traffic that you don't plan to buy, you're actually wasting the opportunities and chances to buy the traffic you need to buy. So what you can do to remedy this situation? Talk to a DSP, or if you're a DSP, talk to your traffic providers. Understand what traffic you need and actually ask them to filter out only the inventory you want to buy from them. This filtering can be done multiple ways. Well, from creative types, display, video, native, to creative sizes. Like in here, they might be all the creative sizes they have, but you need only 300 by 600. That's it. So why would you want to receive all the other creative types if you don't buy them or you don't support them? or you don't want to buy them, or you don't plan to buy them. What happens is reality, that you never plan it ahead. You say, give me traffic, and SSPs are happy. They give you traffic, not the traffic you want, not the traffic you need. They don't know. You never told them what exactly you need. Next thing, uh, that's black and white lists. You know that uh, some publishers that are behind at exchanges, SSPs, they just don't have the inventory that works for you. So don't receive this inventory. Just don't even just say, hey guys, don't send this inventory to me. If they cannot do it, blacklist it on your site. By blacklist means that you will constantly say, hey, I don't want to buy it, don't want to buy it, and you'll give a clear sign to the SPA that they are wasting their electricity, actually their money to send you this type of inventory. And if they want to do business with you, they will do something about it. Or at least you will not be wasting your opportunity. Now, very important question and understanding to all the media buyers who want to use a DSP. Endpoint is where you control things. So, if you share, if you want to get this traffic, and you share this endpoint for this traffic with all the other customers, all the DSPs, then you might have great creative, you might have great targeting, you might have very best in-class optimization technology, but some other guy who also buys this traffic would just say it's beat one cent more. And your creative never ever will even get to the auction and never ever will get a chance to buy. That's quite an important thing to consider. Also, if you share the endpoint it means that all the rules that DSP and SSP set between each other for traffic are applicable to you and to all the other people that buy from the traffic source. It means that you get average result because the DSP needs to make best setup for all customers it has. What's linked to is that you rent a DSP I don't talk about like having self-service accounts with uh, 50 or $500 per month, but many of you buy scale. So you should consider, uh, when talking with DSP, asking for your own dedicated endpoints. Because having your own dedicated endpoints actually gives you great control over the inventory you receive from other ad exchanges and SSPs. Because then you can set up your rules you can actually dictate what traffic you want to receive between inventory type, inventory size, and so on and so forth. If you have this option, you also can actually uh, make a next step in terms of transparency, because this is the level where 
SSPs can send inventory only to you. And actually, it means that despite the fact that using DSP technology, which is very complex, very intransparent, but since you will be the only person who received this inventory, you can actually have direct deal or direct business relationship with SSPs and using DSP just as a technology provider. So your money can go straight to SSPs and you'll know exactly the cost of the traffic that you bought. And you'll know exactly the cost of the DSP that provided you the service. Because now, as you don't share this with all the other users, it can be made completely transparent to you. And it is important, especially when your budgets are in six digits or more. Next thing, again, how you can refine and everything in operating DSP successfully comes down to refining the bid requests you receive. You don't have to have high QPS like a lot of these dots because if you receive only the ones you need, then you can use any technology, even the low-end one with uh, very little QPS, like 1,000, 3,000, because that's a huge amount of inventory. Like 2,000 requests per second turns into billions of impressions per month. And so when you hear our DSP supports 1 million of QPS, it means does nothing for you because this is shared opportunities for all, all, all thousands of users that want to buy this inventory from that particular DSP. What you need to understand is what inventory you want to buy, what inventory you need to buy. And then sit down with your technology provider and work this out. If you can have an endpoint, if this endpoint can have special rules for you, for the inventory you plan to buy, if your SSP can implement the black and white list that you want to have, and so they send only the inventory you need. If your DSP can implement black and white lists on your side, so don't even participate in the auctions on the inventory that you need. In this case, you're all set because you control your media buying activities. Sadly, in all the other cases, uh, you're not in control and you just get what is given to you. And then you either buy it or you don't buy it. And uh, that's why DSP performs way better for all the details you need to reach. Because they don't care about the precision laser focus targeting. They can buy impressions at scale, just all like female, 30, 18, 36 with these limited interests. When you're buying performance, you need to have the capacity to get Sorry, only these green impressions that you need because they will convert. That's it. No magic, just understanding how these two entities operate between each other and how to control the way they operate between each other. Any questions so far? Does this make sense? Please raise your hands if it doesn't make any sense. Okay, it does make sense or it doesn't? Okay, so I promise to give a lot of time for questions as we have them. Some final thoughts. Rent versus own, build versus buy. Over the last two years, I talked to quite a few companies who either building their own DSP or they renting their own DSP as a solution. And it uh, happens so they actually don't understand why they do it. And that's the first important question. Before even thinking well, like whether to build or buy the technology, ask yourself, why are you doing this? Do you have the experience in terms of uh, technology development, in terms of uh, operating the technology? Because what I mentioned to you about this endpoint QPS is just the tip of the iceberg. There is way, way, way more beyond that. But even when it comes down to this tip, Understanding the endpoint and the setup, and you want to buy only the impressions that you want to buy, seems simple, but usually skips out of attention when people start to develop their technology because everybody thinks about, hey, we want 10,000 QPS, we want million QPS. We saw this open source DSP, we can quickly change it to our code and we have our own DSP. So if you're just entering these waters first and you, you are determined, to have your own technology. 
to have total control, just to go around the market, rent uh, some other DSPs, use the interfaces, and make sure you know how to buy your media. If you are successful, at least to some extent, with buying traffic using third-party solutions, only at that point it would make sense to consider whether renting or building your own solution that will like, be totally controlled and operated by you. And actually, we have quite a clear math on the cost effectiveness. Because if you know the budgets that you are successful in investing to buy media programmatically, and you have at least good understanding of the costs, like what you paid for the inventory, what you paid to DSP, you can do a math, really simple math. Whether like using third party with good results works for me, and how much it will cost to me to get the same result for the same budget, building my own technology, and now being responsible for everything. Because when it comes down to working with the DSP provider, anything happens, their responsibility. GDPR kicks in, their responsibility. Uh, service networking, their responsibility. If you operate the technology at yourself, means your team, your responsibility, and your costs. So, again, what makes a good DSP? One, that fits your needs and requirements. Whether you need to own your own DSP? Well, that's a big question, because if you understand your needs and requirements, you understand your volumes, your budgets, and you think you can do better with the technology you control, then go for it. Just make sure you have people building it who understand what they do. So that's it. We have a lot of time left for questions. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, let's do it quick, because uh, then uh, we have the panel discussion we need to get ready, but yes, go ahead. Okay, short question, Vlad. You said that it's possible to use various uh, DSPs for various formats and purposes, mm -hmm. but it uh, gives away all the uh, advantages of programmatic buying when you use omni-channel, it's cross-format, when you collect data from the different sources into this one dashboard. Uh, what's the sense of using different DSPs? First of all, like I said, everybody has different needs. If your key goal is to buy cross-device, they need to look up for DSP that actually allows it to get cross-device inventory with ability to retarget re users. But if you're just looking for mobile and native separately, you might pick up the DSPs, one that is good for native, one that is good for mobile. Because cross-device or cross-format may, may not be a thing for you. You just need conversions, for example. Or you just need reach. Or you may have some other goals and priorities. Uh, thank you very much and have a great panel discussion.